Hi everybody and welcome to this revision video on the biopsychosocial model as part of stage 2 psychology science inquiry skills or SIS. Let's get started. So, the biopsychosocial model states that psychological health, illness, treatments and factors are affected and or caused by the interaction between biological, psychological and social factors. So what this means is that when we're explaining health or behaviour or illness or treatments, anything in psychology, we must look at three factors that go into the subject at hand. So we need to look, in other words, at the biological factors, psychological factors and social factors that go into or could cause or explain that behaviour, the health, the treatment, the illness, etc. So one approach or one perspective is not enough to fully explain behaviour. It must be examined as a holistic concept. So what this means is that we need to look at all three at once. There's no point in just looking at the social factors, for example. We could be missing vital information or vital data regarding psychological factors or biological factors. So when we use the biopsychosocial model, which is what the whole stage two psychology course is built on, and we would have gone through this in year 11 psychology as well, we must look at all three factors at once. Not only do we need to look at individually the psychological, social and biological factors, we also need to, and it's just as important, is how the three perspectives interact with each other. So for example, how do the biological affect the psychological? How does the psychological affect the social? How does the social affect the biological? And so on and so forth. So not only do we need to know what each of these actually mean, we also need to be able to explain how they interact and how they influence and impact each other when it comes to certain behaviours, illnesses, treatments, etc. So let's break it down a little bit uh, before we go any further. So the biological contributes genetic factors, including neurochemistry and previous head or body or trauma injury. So in other words, anything that could explain psychological health or illness or behaviour or well-being from a biological standpoint is obviously looking at the bio part of the model, hence biopsychosocial model, we're starting with biological. So for example, uh, the greatest risk factor for developing schizophrenia is a first degree relative having the illness. So if we're looking at someone who may have suspected schizophrenia, we must look at their family history because it may be a biological reason or factor that is contributing to them and their diagnosis. Another example is G2 dopamine receptors are more prevalent in patients with addiction compared to the rest of the population. So again, if we're looking at someone who is suspected or is showing signs and behaviours of being addicted to a particular substance, we need to look at obviously their receptors and the amount of dopamine being produced because that is a biological factor that is going into explaining their behaviour. Now, these are just examples. There are many other things that um, can affect us in terms of the bio or well, the biological side of the biopsychosocial model. So other biological factors may include different hormones such as testosterone, estrogen, adrenaline, certain diseases, our age, because obviously as we age, different hormones are released and different metabolic um, occurrences happen, the sex uh, of somebody, so what their biological sex is, medication or drugs that they may be on at the time, alcohol, immune response, flood or fight response, which is our stress response, and how much sleep a person has obtained. What all of these have in common is that they all affect us biologically, physically and chemically and can explain someone's illness, treatment or be a factor in one or more of those areas, including behaviour. So looking at the psychological part of the model, it contributes factors of cognition and thinking, particularly cognitive distortions, which can trigger the onset of mental illness and psychological stress, such as anxiety and depression. So previously, we looked at the biological uh, factors, which obviously what's going on in the body, in other words. The psychological is what's going on in the brain. So, for example, trauma and neglect in childhood can shape thinking and create negative emotions leading to heightened emotions. So we know that thinking and cognition is obviously psychologically based, so is emotions and how that's processed. So trauma and neglect can cause distorted thinking and negative emotions and heightened emotions. So what's going on in the brain that may explain someone's trauma, illness, treatment, etc.? Other psychological factors may include learning, emotions, attitudes, memory, perception and beliefs. So just going back to learning, we all learn, so it's a universal process, but the way in which we learn and the rate at which we learn is different amongst each individual. 
emotions I've already talked about. So how we process information and feel uh, certain emotions as well will obviously differ among all of us. All of us can feel emotion and do feel emotion because we are human beings. However, how we actually show that or display that or how deeply we feel emotions can obviously differ as well. Our attitudes towards certain people, groups, uh, topics, etc. That's a universal process. We all have attitudes to everything as we will learn. However, what the attitude is, whether it's positive, negative, neutral or ambivalent, uh, differs amongst each of us based on our experiences. We all have the capacity to remember, all right, we all have memory, but some people remember things that are very traumatic, whereas others do not, so they repress it. Uh, some people have a very good memory in terms of recalling information, whereas others do not. So even though it's a universal process, it is a psychological factor that we need to take into account when explaining someone's behavior, illness, treatment, etc., as I keep saying. Same with perceptions and beliefs. Okay, so we all have the capacity to have, you know, perceive everything and believe um, what we want, but that will obviously differ across each individual. But what all of these have in common is that they are all bi are psychologically based. So what's going on in the brain versus the body, which is biological. Then we have the social factors. So this contributes factors such as cultural values, religion, family and social expectations. So many mental illnesses are heavily influenced by cultural values or the community and society. So what that means is that society can contribute or exacerbate to certain mental illnesses, um, whereas in other cultures it won't actually be as prevalent. So if I just jump down to the example here, anorexia and bulimia, which are eating disorders, are less common in non-Western countries as beauty is not attributed to thinness like it is in the Western world. So very voluptuous women are seen as the ideal in Spain and Venezuela, whereas thinness is an indication of poor health. So it actually depends on what culture someone may belong to as to what is considered beauty. So social factors, in this case culture, can play a huge part and be a massive explanation to someone developing an eating disorder or not, as the case may be, because of the different societal and cultural expectations. There is also an increase in eating disorders, body dysmorphia, depression and anxiety in the male and gender diverse populations due to pressure of sociocultural factors. So again, these social ideals that are reinforced by psychological and biological factors. So, you know, the need to be very muscly or, you know, be a certain height and things of that nature. That is very much influenced, however, by someone's culture and other societal factors. So what people think, social media, TV, advertisements, etc. So what all of these have in common is that they are external to the self. So what's going on in someone's environment that may contribute to them developing an illness or maybe a social factor in treatment or behaviour, etc. It can include other social factors as well. So social support, family background and upbringing, socioeconomic status, gender expectations, interpersonal relationships and social media is a massive one that we will talk about later uh, in the year. But all of these, like I said, have in common are the external factors that may contribute to someone's uh, well-being or lack thereof in terms of mental illness and so on. So everything that we look at in this course is from the biopsychosocial model, whether it is an illness, a treatment, a behaviour, etc. So to keep it simple, let's break it down. So bio, what's going on in the body to influence behavior? So again, those factors that I talked about before. So, you know, dopamine, hormones, sleep, stress, flight or fight, um, you know, substances, dr um, drugs and alcohol and so on. Psycho, what's going on in the brain to influence behavior? So the universal processes, but obviously how they're interpreted will differ among all of us. So things like memory, learning, perception, cognition, emotions. And social, what are the external factors that are influencing this person's behaviour? So external to the self. So again, social media, friendship groups, family upbringing, culture, obviously is a huge one as well, like I've just talked about. And more importantly, in year 12, how do these factors interact and influence each other? So if I just go back for a moment to the social example that I've got here, I've said in this second dot point, and it also relates to this first dot point, about what's considered beautiful or what's considered the ideal physically for men and women. So obviously there's a lot of pressure from the social perspective, all right, when it comes to advertising and social media and, you know, things like Instagram. 
So that's the social, but then that will obviously affect the psychological. So it will affect someone's perception of themselves in terms of how they look and so on. All right. So that's the social affecting the psychological, which they then may affect the biological, which is um, someone's stress response or, you know, over exercising or not eating enough, for example, if they unfortunately they develop an eating disorder. So not only do you need to know all three aspects exclusively you must be able to then explain and analyze how they interact and how they influence each other it won't necessarily be a case of all three interacting with each other it might be two in particular interact with each other depending on the example that you are given in a test or an exam but that is very important so how not only what they are but how do they influence and impact each other so i hope you found this tutorial video this revision video useful as always any questions let me know